Hi, and welcome back to another motivational moment with me, your coach, Michelle. That's Michelle with two L's. So today I'm going to be talking about how to push through the pain. And so for the time that is ours to share, I want to talk about how you push through the pain when life gets hard, because life is going to get hard for all of us. And if it hasn't gotten hard for you yet, honey, just keep on living because eventually it will. And no, let me tell you what I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm wishing it on you. I'm just telling you that is life. Life is not always going to be a bed of roses. So here's how to make getting through hard times a little less difficult. So number one, stay positive. Life is not the way it's supposed to be. It's the way that it is. The way you cope is what makes the difference. This is a quote by Virginia Satire. When you stay positive, you're putting yourself in the best position possible to not only make it through those bad times, but also to become a better person in the process. When life takes a turn for the worse, you can do one of two things. You can remain positive and remind yourself that there really is a light at the end of the tunnel and that you'll make it through, or you can curl up in the fetal position and become a victim of circumstances. The choice is yours. Now, I'm not saying that you will never have a bad day or you won't get a, a little discouraged or you won't shed a tear or two or three or four, but I am saying that you have to eventually pick up the pieces and start or keep moving forward. When life happens to you, you cannot just decide, okay, I'm going to ball up in the fetal position. I'm just going to stay here. No, you've got to straighten your back up, lift your pecs, honey, hold your head up, and you keep moving forward. Number two, learn from the difficult times. Facing difficulties is inevitable. Learning from them is optional. And this is a quote by John Maxwell, which I think is a very powerful quote. And learning, so learn from what has happened to you so that you don't make the same mistake twice. See, it's easier getting through a difficult time when you know the chances of it happening again are slim to none, okay? And, and that's the thing. A lot of times people will go through situations and issues and yet they didn't learn anything from it. And then before you know it, they find themselves right back in that same, or I should say not necessarily the same situation, but a similar situation. It might just be with a different person or with a different job or different whatever. But you didn't learn anything the first time because if you did, you wouldn't allow yourself to, to be where you are right now. So, number three, know what you're grateful for. See, gratitude means showing appreciation for all the good in your life instead of focusing on the negative. Get clear about what it is that you're grateful for. Let me put a pin right here. In my throughout my lifetime, I've experienced some 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 super super highs and some super super lows. But you know what? I am grateful and I'm thankful and I thank God every day for all of the highs in my life. I don't sit around and say, Lord, you know, do you remember when this happened, when that happened, when the other happened? No. I focus on the good things. I can even say, Lord, you know what? Life may not necessarily be perfect right now, but you know, I am so thankful that for all that you've done. I'm thankful for all the doors that you've opened. I'm thankful for all the people that you put into my life to help make me a better person. So I can't worry about the negative stuff. Because negative things are just going to happen. They're going to happen to me and they're going to happen to you. But I can't focus all my time and energy on it because, number one, all it does is it just brings me down. And it stresses me out and I don't have time for it. But when you are truly grateful, that's when you can sit around and say, Lord, you know what? I remember when you did this. Because guess what? If he did it before, he'll do it again. But you've got to be grateful for what you have and not worry about what you don't have. So write out everything in your life that you can think of that you're grateful for having and or experiencing. The difficult time you're going through will start to seem less significant when it's compared to everything that's going on in your life. If you t stop right now, if you have anything in your life that's not going right or going the way you thought it should be going, if you compare that to all of the good that God has done for you, has given you, the ways he's made for you, 
that whatever that thing is you're dealing with right now, honey, it's going to seem about that big. In essence, it might be this big, but it's going to seem that big when you compare it to all of the other great things that you've experienced in life. Number four, focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. Some situations are beyond your control, and no matter what you do, you can't change them. You're setting yourself up for frustration when you focus your time and energy on things that you can't control. You're also making the situation seem worse, even worse than it actually is, because you're focusing on the negatives. Anytime you focus on the negatives, things seem super worse. Whereas they're just worse right here, the more you focus on the negative, it becomes worse or way out here. It just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So instead, focus on the things that are within your control because that's the only way you can make a change that's actually going to help you. Make a list of the things that you can change and put all your focus on those things. Make a list. A list of all the things that you can change and all the things that you can't change. And then focus on the things that you can change. For example, if you don't like your weight or you took your measure measurements and you don't like what you see, you can change that. So instead of focusing on the fact that you're, did I say fat or fact? Good grief. Instead of focusing on the fact that you are overweight or your BMI is, is higher than it's ever been, don't focus on that. Because that just makes the problem seem like it's much bigger than it actually is. Because it is bad. But you're making it seem bigger than it actually is. Instead, focus on what you're going to do to fix the problem. Focus on how you're going to eat healthier. Focus on how you're going to go to the grocery store with a list of healthy items that you can check off and pick up. Focus on the fact that you're going to renew that gym membership if you canceled it last year because of, of, of COVID. I did not. Kept both of mine. Focus on the workouts that you're going to plan for yourself this week, next week, next month, or however often you go to the gym. Focus on those things. Let that stuff consume your energy and consume your time. Not the stuff that you can't do anything about. Number five, build up your community. Having the right people around you is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself when times get rough. You need loving people because a little love always makes the bad days seem a little bit brighter. You need caring people because it helps to have someone who cares about you. I'm sorry, cares about your well-being as much as you do. You need honest people who will look you in the eye and tell you the truth. Their honesty may not I'm sorry, their honesty may be that one piece of information that you need to get through the tough time. You need people that are available for when you need to pick up the phone looking for some compassion or honesty. It helps to have someone who's going to answer the phone. Community is also important because it helps to have someone who understands what you're going through and can relate to your situation. If you can find a community who has been through what you're going through, you can find out how they made it and then apply what they learned to your own life because whatever they learned it just might help you but let me before i move on to number six i wanted to go back because i loved when i talked about how you need loving people if you don't have loving people in your life and and you know as i like to say in your inner circle honey you are doomed because you can't do this by yourself you've got to have loving people in your life and then you only need one. You don't need to have a whole tribe. It's nice if you do, but you only need one. And then I talked about how you need caring people. Because the person that cares about you, you need somebody that cares about your well-being. See, when people don't care, truly care about your well-being, they'll sit and let you continue down the road with destructive behavior. They'll see that you drink too much or, or you're getting high too often or, 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 or you're living a lifestyle that's not... Um, a healthy lifestyle in any way, shape, or form, and they won't say anything. You know why? Because they don't really care. Their thing is, well, it's their life. <laughs> they can do whatever they want to. It's not my life. Yeah, but if if I call you my friend, I'm not going to let you walk down that road to destruction, and I'm not going to say anything. And then, like I said, you need honest people. You need people that's going to look you in the eye and tell you the truth. You need somebody that's going to look you in the eye and say, you know what, uh, Barbara Jean, you, you, you didn't put on a lot of weight and you need to work on getting that weight off 
before your doctor tells you you've become a diabetic. Or, Barbara Jean, you know, you need to get a better circle of friends. Because if you've got nine friends that are doing things they have no business doing, guess what? Sure enough, you're going to end up becoming the tenth person doing exactly what they're doing. But they can be honest with you and tell you that. If you have people in your inner circle that cannot look you in the face and tell you the truth about yourself, and you need to also be open to receive it. See, a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth. If I'm a mean and or, forgive my language, you guys, shitty person, I want you to be able to look me in my face and tell me that. Michelle, you are a mean, shitty person. And you really need to work on that. Because maybe I don't realize it. Or maybe I'm dealing with some other stuff in my life that causes me to be that way towards other people. But you need those people that are going to be honest with you to tell you that. Now, when I say honesty, I'm not talking about, you know, you have on a blouse or an outfit that just looks horrible as hell. I, your taste may not be my taste. So I'm not necessarily talking about that either. Be careful about that, you guys. Please be careful about that. You don't always have to tell people, girl, <laughs> that outfit is ugly as I don't know what. That may be that person's style just because you don't like it. Just because I don't like it. It may not be something I would wear. I would never tell you. That is so ugly. Now, if you ask me my honest opinion and you said, Michelle, what do you think about this top? I'm just going to be honest and say, you know what? It doesn't work for me. I wouldn't wear it. I wouldn't have purchased it. But if you like it, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter what I think. Okay, let me move on. And so you need people who are available. If you have a circle of friends and every time you need them, they're not around. But every time they need you, you're available. That's a problem. You, you need to get you a new circle of friends. Because that, that's absolutely unacceptable. You need to have people that can be there for you just like you're there for them. But but it's so important that you have a community. And everybody should have one. Now, I know some of y'all thinking, girl, I don't need no community. I got this. You know, I love the Lord just like you do. And I know that, that God is always on my side. How, however, I need a community that's right here in the... I have God as my community in the spiritual world, but I need somebody... Or I need a community of folks right here that I can reach out and put my hands on. Or if I need a hug, that they can reach out and put their hands on me. Number six, be kind to yourself. In order to survive tough times, you have to take care of yourself. It doesn't matter what you do. Just do something that gets your mind and your body engaged at, at a higher level than wallowing in self-pity. If you know me, then you know I don't do self-pity. I don't do wallowing in anything. We're just not, not here in, in my camp. You can have pity parties if you want to, but do not invite me because I won't come. Nor will I ever invite you to one of to my, one of mine because I don't do pity parties. That's just me. And it's not that I think I'm better than anybody else. I just choose not to. I'm going to be good to myself. Okay, maybe some things aren't working out right or uh, working out the way I thought that they would, but I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not going to say, Michelle, you are so stupid. I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you did that. You know what? Life happens. And then I go to God in prayer and keep it moving. But I'm always going to be kind to myself. Just like if you plan on being in my circle of friends, you're going to be kind to me as well. Because now we're going to have a problem. But I'm always going to be kind to you because that's just the, the type of person that I am. Number seven, forgive. If someone else is at fault for the bad situation that you find yourself in, the natural response is to harbor anger or resentment towards that person. But what if you forgave that person? Mm. What if you accepted what happened, but you no longer held it against them? So what... It would... I'm sorry, it would... Uh, it would what would happen is that you would feel so much better because now instead of focusing on the negative feelings that you have towards that person or those people, you can focus on moving forward. I'm going to tell you a little secret, and I learned this the hard way. Someone that I dated, oh, I couldn't stand him for years. And I, I will be the first one to tell you that I don't hate anybody. I dislike people, but I don't hate anybody because hate is such a strong word. And hate is one of those things that... It just eats away at you. So you have to be careful about hating people and hating things. 
But the, I dated this guy once and I had gotten to the point where I honestly could say that I just hated him. And every time his my name popped up in my mind, or God forbid I happened to see him out someplace, that hate would just build up all over again. And one day, I said, Michelle, why are you spending so much time hating on this individual? They have moved on with their lives. They probably aren't even thinking about you. And you sit up here hating this person. And it wasn't until the last time I saw them at the gym that I was able to finally say, you know what, I'm done with that. That's old, and, and I've moved on. You know, they've moved on, obviously, living their lives, living their life, doing whatever it is they're doing. They're not thinking about me. They don't care whether I hate them or not. And I just felt a sense of relief just fall off my shoulders when I did that. So I just want to encourage you, if you if there's somebody in your life that you just hate, Honey, you need to stop hating because all that's doing is eating away at you. And I'm so sorry I keep looking down at my phone because someone's calling me. If I didn't answer the first time. But let me finish this up. And so where was I? Um, or maybe the difficult time you're going through is a direct result of something that you did. If you don't or can't forgive yourself, then you get caught up in a web of self-hatred and this definitely won't help things at all. It's important to forgive others and ourselves that we may be free to move forward with our lives. And I, I'm going to, because that was my last point, but I'm going to stress that if you don't forgive yourself, why should other people forgive you? There's nothing in this world that I have ever said or done that I don't forgive myself for. You know why? Because we all do things. Life happens to all of us, but I will not sit around berating myself, disliking myself, hating myself over something I may have said or done. Guess what? I've forgiven myself. I've asked God to forgive me. I probably have asked those individuals or that individual to forgive me, and I'm done with it. I'm moving on because life continues to move on. Let me do a quick recap and I promise I'll let you be. So in today's motivational moment, we talked about pushing through the pain. And so number one, I said that you have to stay positive. And because staying positive puts you in the best position possible to not only make it through the bad times, but also to become a much better person in the process. Number two, I said, learn from the difficult times. Whatever it is that you're going through, learn something from that. And then that way you're not as likely to make that same mistake again. You may make other mistakes, but you won't make that mistake. And I shared a quote by John Maxwell that says, facing difficulties is, is inevitable. Learning from them is optional. It's inevitable. You're going to face some difficulty, difficulties. But whether or not you learn from them, that's up to you. Number three, know what you're grateful for. Do you know what, what it is that you're grateful for? See, I have my list. I have my list of things in my... Um, well, this is my war binder. And in here, I write down things that I'm grateful for. And I'm, that, I'm always adding to that list. The things and the people that I'm grateful for. You've got to know what it is that you're grateful for. Because when you know what it is that you're grateful for, that's what you're going to spend your time focusing on. Not the other stuff. Number four, focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. If you cannot control something, just like, okay, for example, you can't control somebody else's behavior. But you walk around spending your time focusing on their ugliness. When I say ugliness, I'm talking about internally, their behavior towards other people. Why? You can control how you deal with that person. So spend your time focusing on that, not the fact that they have an ugly attitude. Number five is build up your community. You have to have a community. I say community, but you can call it your circle of influence, your circle of friends, whatever it is, your group, your homies, whatever. Your buddies, doesn't matter what you want to call it, but you've got to build up your community. And I talked about how you have to have the right people around you because that is so important. You need to have loving people. They, they should be compassionate people, caring people, people that, that, that make themselves available. And I get it. At some point in time, we're always going to, we're all going to be busy 
at some point in time, but if you have, don't have anybody that's ever available when you need them, then that's a problem. And you need honest people. You need people that are going to be honest. If you said to your friend, hey, you know, do you think I drink too much? And they say, oh, no, honey, don't worry about that. Who told, who said that? You're fine. And you know full well that you, you are uh, this close from being becoming a stone-cold alcoholic. Then that person, they don't need to be in your community because they can't even be honest with you. An honest person will say, yes, you drink too much. You're an alcoholic. You're a borderline alcoholic. But if they can't even be honest with you about that, why are they in your circle? I'm just saying. And you need people who, I talked about compassion and honesty and all of that, because community is so important as you try to go through life. Yeah, you can try to go through life and do things on your own if you want to. But I promise you, at some point in time, you're going to reach back because you need people in your life. Number six, be kind to yourself. You know, it's bad enough that, that some people let the world beat down on them. But it's even worse when you do it to yourself. And I've met people like that. And that disturbs my inner being. It really does. And I have had to say to people, stop. If you want to beat yourself down, you can do that. But don't do it in my presence. Because that bothers me. That bothers me. How dare you beat yourself down? This is why you can't move on in life. This is why you will never become a better person. Be kind to yourself. Doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter what you said, where you went. Be kind to yourself. And last but not least, I said forgive. Not only do you need to forgive other people, but you need to forgive yourself. Because some of y'all right now, I guarantee it, I guarantee it, some of you right now have some things that have happened in your life, some things that you've done, people you've been with you probably shouldn't have, and you are having a hard time forgiving yourself. But can I tell you this? It does you no good to do that. Forgive yourself. Because guess what? God's forgiven you. God is, And it's interesting how God can forgive us, but we can't forgive ourselves. Mm -mm. It's time that you forgive yourself. And if you're holding a grudge against someone else, it's time to let that go. I am so thankful that I can sit here before you right now and say that there's not one person in this world that I have not forgiven. Anybody that's ever wronged me in any way, shape, or form, trust me when I tell you, I've forgiven them. I've even asked God to, 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 to keep his hand on them, to bless them, to allow whatever it was that they said or did to make them a better person. I've forgiven myself for, myself for many things that I've said and done in life. Because I'm all about forgiveness. You guys, that's all I have. And I just want to say thank you so much. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you for joining me. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to tap that bell because I don't want you to miss anything. And as the weather gets a little bit warmer and I have a new uh, tripod for my car. Because I have one that goes in a couple. I'm not quite sure if I'm really feeling that one yet. But I bought another one that sticks to the windshield. And I, I have a new phone, you guys, so I will be getting back into doing my more car, car conversations as the weather's getting nicer. And so I don't want you to miss anything. That's the whole point of me telling you that. I don't want you to miss anything. For those of you, this is not your first time. You're already subscribed. Thank you so much. I could not do what I do without you guys. And I just want to also say this. I love each and every one of you. I love you no matter what. And you know the drill. You know my spiel. There's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing at all. I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to love you if you're going up. I'm going to love you when you're coming down. I'm going to love you when you're going in. I'm going to love you when you're coming out. But most importantly, I'm going to love you when nobody else even likes you. And you can take that to the bank. And that's always, that is real, that is true, that is from my heart. I love each and every one of you. And I want to see you all succeed. Till our next video, take care.